Upon successfully logging onto the UIF online system, you are going to click the kebab menu, which will display the menu that you are seeing on the left. Once you click on the drop down button, it will display other UIF benefits unemployment, illness, maternity, as well as adoption benefits. However, the unemployment benefits and the maternity are the only benefits that are currently loaded onto the UIF online system. The illness and adoption, you will still have to submit those manually at the nearest Department of Employment and Labor. If you are registered as a male, gaining in time to a chance and you want to apply for maternity benefit, it will only give you this error message because the maternity benefit is only for female applicants, not for for male applicants. Whatever ID that you're going to put there, it has to be a female ID and it has to be as per home affairs records. Let's now proceed to submit our application for unemployment benefit. And then once you're done, it will take you to the next page where you're going to have to put in your personal details. You will put in your first names as per home affairs database and records. You will put in your surname, your ID number, your work telephone number if you still have, as well as your home telephone number. Usually it's that telecom number that starts with 010, etc. You will put the numbers as is according to the numbers that you have. Onto this page now, you are going to put in your mobile number. You will put in your fax number from work, your email address. And then from there, you're going to the postal address. Um, you put your postal code, your address as is. Now, I suggest that you go to the local municipality to ensure that you get the correct address, the correct stand number, the correct location, the correct suburb, as well as the correct um, city. If a postal address is the same as the residential address, please do select the yes there like I did. However, if it is different, you are going to be taken to another page where you are going to update this manually. And then once you're done, you're going to the zoning, which is the region. Please do select the correct region as well as the correct labor center. Once this is completed, you're going to click save and continue to the next page. A nightmare for many banking details. Now you are going to put in your ID number there as per home affairs records. You will put in your account holder's name as per your bank. You will click in the drop down button. It will give you a selection of uh, banks that they have loaded onto the system. If yours is not there, you will then have to put it manually or complete a UI 2.8. Take it to the nearest department of employment and labor. They will load it for you manually. Then you will go in and put in the branch code. You have to be very careful on this one. Please, Hannes, listen to me very carefully. There is a universal branch code and there is a bank um, branch code. You need to go to your bank and find out which um, branch code are they using. Are they using the universal one or are they using the one specifically for that particular branch? Hence, I did mention that if the bank that you are utilizing is not on this list that is provided by the Department of Employment and Labor, then you will have to complete a UI 2.8 whereby they are going to give you the correct branch code. Then you will have to select the account type if it's a savings or a current account. Once you're done, you are going to put in your account number there. Please ensure that you do not share this with anyone. There's a number of applicants who have approached me and said somebody has been calling them saying they work for the Department of Employment and Labor. When you do receive such a call, I would strongly recommend that you either go to the Department of Employment and Labor personally and confirm if that caller is, is indeed from the Department of Employment and Labor. Also, you also need to exercise caution when dealing with such individuals, especially if you're talking to them over the phone. On this particular page, you are going to be requested to submit your supporting documents. That is your UI-19 as well as the salary schedule. I've had a number of applicants asking me how to complete a UI-19 and salary schedule. There's um, selected people that need to complete a UI-19 as well as the salary schedule. UIF practitioner, your employer, HR or payroll administrators. Other than that, there's no one else that needs to complete a UI-19 or a salary schedule. This particular online platform, it will never assess whether your supporting documents are correctly filled and there are no errors. I do offer a service where I check um, the supporting documents if they are correctly filled. I will give you a detailed report as well as any discrepancies that I have picked up while assessing your documents and then you can submit your supporting documents to the Department of Employment and Labor manually or online knowing very well that everything has been checked out and it meets their requirements. 
my link is on the bio if you are interested in utilizing that service now the submit you're going to click there and submit your ui19 completed by your employer as well as the salary schedule completed again by your employer once you're done you're going to click next and you're going to the next page on this page now you are going still to put in your id your first name same names type of benefit um we are applying for unemployment benefit date of the application i often say this on my live dates with the department are extremely important the occupation that you do the qualification as well you're going to click those drop down button which will give you the options that they have once you're done you're clicking next and you're going to the next page remember that you are still unemployed and we are applying for unemployment benefit you will be asked if you are registered as a work seeker please do click yes you will select the appropriate and accurate um region once you're done, you're going to select the correct labor center. And when you are done, you are going to be asked if you are available and capable for work. Please say yes. If you are asked whether you have returned back to work, if you have not returned back to work like myself, you will say no. If you have found employment, please do say yes. Remember, the department is only paying you from the day you become officially unemployed until you find employment. If you do find employment, do indicate that you have returned back to work. And then you will be asked if actually the dismissal was the constructive dismissal. If you say yes, you will have to produce the CCMA case number. If you say no, like myself, then you will proceed to the next page. On to the last page. If you were one of those that were privileged to be assisted by the official, and you will be asked if you were assisted by the official at the labor center, you will say yes. If you say yes, it will take you to another page where this official will have to enter his or her personal number. If you were not assisted by the official, but you're one of those that was watching CNP educational videos, then you will say no. Once you're done, please do read the terms and condition, accept, and then you will click submit. You will then have successfully submitted your UIF unemployment benefit. And congratulations, honey. Let the countdown begin. I will see you on the next video. Yes. Siza kukwega ukupendula imibuzo yako kunye na imibuzo malunga ne UIF. Siza kukwega nukusosa izi ndo ezi ninzi, ezi ngezizo, onazo nge UIF. Ngeta ukubege upalise kuchanelu wetu i YouTube. Joina ipepale tulika Facebook, kunye na TikTok yetu. Tamaku, ngosi.